Welcome to the AI Papers Podcast Daily. Uh, today we're doing something pretty interesting. We're going to be diving into a paper okay. called One Minute Video Generation with Test Time Training. Yeah. Um, and I think what's really interesting about this is it's tackling a big challenge in AI video creation, which is how to generate longer, more coherent videos mm -hmm. that tell complex stories. Yeah. You know, because right now, if you look at a lot of yeah. publicly available AI tools for video, they're really limited to short clips. It's a great point. Think about Sora, MovieGen, Ray2, VO2. These are kind of the big names in the game right now. Yeah. And they're mostly producing videos that are seconds long. Mm -hmm. They struggle to weave together multiple scenes into a longer narrative. Yeah. And so this paper wants to extend those limits significantly, aiming for a full minute of generated video with a complex story. Exactly. And so they highlight a couple of reasons yeah. why this is so difficult for current AI. Mm. Uh, the first one is about how AI models for sequence generation, you know, these things called transformers, how they handle long stretches of information. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it really has to do with yeah. how they become yeah. really expensive from a computational perspective. Exactly. As the video gets longer. So the, the core insight here is that as the video gets longer, yeah. the computational demand explodes exponentially. Imagine trying to compare every single pixel yeah. with every other pixel across an entire minute of footage. And you can see how that would quickly become too much for even powerful computers to handle. So this is the self-attention bottleneck that they're talking about. Yeah. Um, and the longer the video, the more these comparisons you need to make. The paper actually mentions that a single minute of video could involve over 300,000 individual pieces of information or tokens. Yeah. The second challenge that they discuss is around some of the more... Uh, recent and efficient alternatives mm -hmm. to the self-attention mechanism. Uh, and, you know, these are things like RNN layers and newer versions of RNN layers like oh. Mamba and DeltaNet. Um, now, these are a lot better at dealing with long sequences. But the researchers argue that the way that these models store information from the past, what they call their hidden states, mm -hmm. isn't really sophisticated enough to capture the nuances of a multi-scene story. I see what you mean. So what's fascinating here is these more efficient layers, mm. they're great at keeping track of things in a long sequence, but they're not as good at remembering and mm -hmm. understanding the co complex relationships between events. That happened much earlier. Yeah. It's almost like trying to summarize a novel in just a few bullet points. Yeah. You lose so much of the richness. That connects everything together. So they struggle to maintain that deep understanding of the narrative across that longer time frame. Okay, so how do they actually, yeah. how do they try to overcome these limitations? Yeah. Um, well, they introduce something called test time training okay. or TTT layers. Huh? And the basic idea here is instead of using like a standard method mm -hmm. for remembering past information, like a piece of data, they actually use a small neural network as the memory itself. What's significant about that is that a neural network can store and process complex information much better than say like a fixed size piece of data. Yeah. Think of it like upgrading from a simple notepad to a powerful computer for taking notes. So these TTT layers can retain much more intricate detail from the preceding video. And the test time training aspect mm -hmm. is actually crucial because it means that these inner neural networks are continuing to learn and adapt, even as the model is generating a brand new video. So unlike typical models, yeah. that train once, yeah. and then they're fixed. This one's kind of yeah. like continuously learning. Exactly. So the inner neural network within this TTT layer updates itself based on what it's seeing. So it's constantly self-correcting right. to better capture the patterns and relationships in the video sequence. Yeah, that's so interesting. OK, so they didn't just create these TGT layers from scratch. They actually integrated them into a powerful video generation model called Cog Video X5B. OK. Um, now, can you explain a little bit, what is a diffusion transformer? Sure. So a diffusion transformer is a type of AI model that learns to generate videos by starting with just visual noise mm -hmm. and gradually refining it into a coherent image sequence guided by some text description. And Cog Video X5B was already quite good at generating short video clips, typically like three to six seconds long. So by adding these new TTT layers into Cog Video X, their goal was to be able to handle much longer sequences. 
while still benefiting from the existing strengths. Exactly. So to manage that computational demand, they focus those original attention mechanisms on shorter three-second chunks. So it's a clever combination. You have these local attention mechanisms handling the details and coherence within these short segments. And then you have the global TTT layers processing the entire video sequence, using their more efficient memory to maintain that flow. To put their method to the test, they focused on one minute long stories based on Tom and Jerry cartoons. Interesting. So why Tom and Jerry? Yeah, why Tom and Jerry? Well, Tom and Jerry is a masterclass in visual storytelling. So it provides a rigorous test for their model's ability to maintain narrative coherence. These cartoons have intricate multi-scene narratives with lots of dynamic movement and cause and effect relationships that unfold over time. Yeah. They even created their own data set of about seven hours of cartoons wow. with detailed text descriptions of what was happening scene by scene to fine tune their role. So they were just aiming to generate random one minute animations. They were really trying to capture. What, capture and the logical progression. Yeah. Of yeah. events that you see in a Tom and Jerry episode. Exactly. Yeah. Their focus was on achieving long range coherence and capturing those intricate storytelling elements, even if the generated visuals weren't perfect. So if they can make progress on this in a complex domain like cartoons, those advancements should eventually benefit more general video generation tasks as well. Right. Now, how do they actually determine if their TTT enhanced model yeah. was better than existing methods? Well, they conducted an evaluation where humans watched and compared the videos generated by their method against videos created by strong baseline models, including Mamba 2, gated diltonet, and a method using standard sliding window attention. Okay. The human evaluators were asked to rate the videos based on a few criteria, uh, how well it matched the text description, uh, how natural the motion looked, the overall visual quality, and importantly, how consistent and coherent the video was over time. So the results sound like the TTT layers really showed their potential. Yeah, they did. The human evaluation showed that. Their TTT MLP method produced significantly more coherent videos with complex stories compared to the other approaches, and they measured that improvement using ELO points. Think of ELO points as a way to rank players in a game based on their wins and losses against each other. Yeah. In this case, the players are different video generation models. Their TTT MLP method achieved a 34 ELO point improvement over the next best baseline. For context, the paper mentioned, a noticeable improvement in language models could be around 29 ELO points. So 34 is a really meaningful gain. Yeah, that's a very compelling result. And it really highlights the power of these TTT layers. But were there any trade-offs or limitations? There were some limitations. Um, even with optimization, the TTT MLP method was still more computationally demanding than some of the other models, uh, particularly in terms of how long it took to generate a video. Okay. And what about the quality of the videos? I mean, were they flawless masterpieces of cartoon storytelling? The generated videos still had some imperfections. Uh, there were moments where the video wasn't perfectly consistent over time. Uh, there were instances of motion that didn't look entirely natural and some inconsistencies in the overall visual style. So it's a step forward, but there's yeah. still room for improvement. Exactly. The paper outlined several directions for future research. Uh, that includes finding ways to make these TTT layers run faster, uh, maybe exploring better ways to integrate them and even experimenting with using larger and more complex neural networks as the hidden states. So what's the big takeaway here? Why should someone interested in AI be excited about this research? Well, this research signals a potential shift in what AI can achieve. It suggests that we're moving towards a future where AI can generate longer, more engaging visual stories. This could have huge impact on things like entertainment, education, even how we communicate ideas visually. Imagine AI being able to autonomously create minute-long videos with intricate plots and character development. This raises a really interesting question. How might this fundamentally change how we create and consume visual stories in the future, even beyond cartoons? That's something to think about. Thanks for joining me for this deep dive.